Okay, a quick little uh, bonus video, I suppose, um, just showing how you can convert the function that I've highlighted here in this question in a single trig function. Of course, it's really uh, tricky, well, impossible really, to do anything with the function uh, when it's like this. We can't solve it. Um, it's very tricky to plot the graph of it. So you need to express this as a single function. Um, the 700 at the start, that's not really um, a worry. It's the fact that we've got two trig functions here. We've got the sine bit and we've got the cosine bit. And we really need to express that as a single trig function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the common factor of 100 that both of these have. And I'm just going to work with sine 180 plus root 3 cos 180t. Okay. To express this as a single trig function, I need to use one of the four identities. Uh, so I need to use either cos a plus or minus b, or I need to use sine a plus or minus b, and the relevant expansions. What I'm going to use so I'm going to use uh, sine a plus b, but of course any of the other four will work. Right, so I'm going to try and express this in the form k sine. Now, normally we would say x plus alpha, but we're not dealing with x here. We're dealing with 180t. So k sine 180t plus alpha. And I'm going to write that in its expanded form. So you don't need to remember the trig addition expansions. You're given them on your formula sheet. So that'll be k sine 180t cos alpha plus k cos 180t sine alpha. Now, it's important that you remember this k, that you actually you implicitly state it. Because if you don't, that will drop your mark. Now, um, I'm going to rearrange this just to make it a little bit easier to identify my building blocks. So, I'm arranging it so the 180t bits come at the end. Okay. So remember, this has all just been multiplied together doesn't matter the order I multiply things in. Okay, same here. I'm going to write sine alpha cos 180t. Squeeze that t in there. Now, sine 180t, sine 180t. I'm going to compare the coefficients, what they've been multiplied by. So I know k cos alpha is equal to hmm, 1. I've got 1 in front of my sign. I've got one lot of sine 180 there. Do exactly the same with cos 180. So it means positive k sine alpha is equal to positive root 3. So I've got my two building blocks, which are going to be vital for putting the whole thing together. Right, I'll just tidy this up. Right, I now need to find what k and alpha are. So, to find k, I can square my two terms and add them together. And I'll do the same with the actual values. And, well, uh, so I've squared 1 and squared root 3, added them together. I'm now going to take out a common factor of k, because if we look, both of these things have got k squared. So I've taken out a common factor of k squared. Now, the reason for doing that is hmm, k, uh, cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha. That is one of our trig identities. We should know that that will simplify down to 1, okay? Um, I'll 
deal with this side first though. So 1 squared, 1. Root 3 squared, well, squaring root 3 will give you just 3. Okay, uh, so here I've got k squared times 1, because all of that is equal to 1, equals, well, 1 plus 3 is 4. So k squared equals 4. So k is going to equal root 4. Now it's important you remember, if you leave it like this in an exam situation, you will lose a mark. If you've got a third that can be simplified, you must simplify it. So the square root of 4, 2. k is equal to 2, because uh, we ignore the negative 2 uh, possibility, because k is always meant to be positive. Right, uh, tidy up again. Right, now to find alpha. Um, I know if I take k sine alpha, divided by k cos alpha, well, for a start those k's will cancel out, and sine divided by cosine will always give me tan alpha. So I know tan alpha is equal to, well, k sine alpha is root 3 over cosine alpha, and well we know that is 1, root 3 over 1. Inverse tan of root 3. Exact values again. Should know that that is 60. 60 degrees. We just need to check we've got the right answer there, though. We need to check we've got the answer in the right quadrant. So cosine is positive. So alpha could be in the first or fourth quadrant. Sine is also positive, so that could be in the first or the second. So straight away we can see we are dealing with alpha in the first quad. So that means alpha is equal to 60 degrees. Now, remember, uh, if you've been asked to state this as a single function, you should do that. So we had uh, k sine 180t plus alpha, so that would give me k, which is 2, sine 180t plus 60. Okay, um, if we go back and actually look at our original function, f of t, well, we've got that 700 plus, now remember we took out a factor of 100 to start. So this 2, we need to put the 100 back in, so that would give me 200. 200 sine 180 t, and I've run out of space, plus 60. And that is what I had in the main video for this question. So what I've done here is I've just shown you the steps I've missed out.